Uh, I would like to, to thank you, Adam, for kind invitation and for acceptance of my talk and for the change of my talk, acceptance of the change of subject of my talk. I'm sorry, I would like to uh, apologize to everybody for the mess I made by this changing. Uh, it is written that I will, uh, on, the, on the program, that I will talk about monadology uh, uh, by Leibniz, but we know monad monadology and when I was reading some, uh, some uh, talks, uh, some uh, abstracts, It was turned off, yeah. Okay, thank you very much. I need, a, as you see, two persons for help, helping me to talk. <laughs> Three persons, sorry. <laughs> yes, yes. So, uh, uh, when I was uh, reading uh, abstracts for this conference, of talks for this conference, I, I noticed that there is only uh, uh, lack of uh, logical solipsism. So I think that uh, maybe it will be better to propose you s some, to present some, uh, something else than uh, monadology. Uh, many years ago, really many years ago, when I was, uh, when I, uh, at the beginning of my work in logic, I was working I was working uh, in uh, non fragon logic. It was an uh, uh, idea uh, by Professor Roman Sushko. He died many years ago. Uh, and his uh, famous calculus, SCI, uh, uh, realizes, realizes this uh, abolition of this fragon uh, axiom. Uh, what is it? That all uh, true sentences have uh, one reference. It's true, and uh, all false sentences has one reference of falsehood. Uh, to speak in the truth, I didn't understand well. Maybe I understand, but I didn't feel uh, this uh, idea. Also, I was working in intuitionistic version of uh, non fragon logic. But uh, finally, uh, even when I constructed another uh, calculus, I still didn't feel uh, this, uh, uh, this idea. That is why I, I would like to present uh, my reflection about it. Let us, let us see. Um, Sushko's uh, Central Calculus of Identity is a classical logic extended by a binary connective of identity. It's a trivial identity. It's trivial uh, sense uh, because identity is trivial. Uh, it was uh, a main, uh, main idea by, by Sushko. Only extensions, uh, all extensions are possible, but uh, sense of uh, identity is like, as we can see, so the most important Interpret is interpretation of this uh, identity. Uh, two sentences are identical if and only if they have the same sem semantic correlate. What does it mean? That uh, semantics adequate for this calculus needs more than two, uh, needs models with more than two objects, elements. Uh, this is realization of this idea, of non fragon idea. Yeah. According to intention, Sushko's intentions, uh, semantic for SCI should be understood as a, a situational semantics. It was probably some mistake because it, it generates <laughs> some objects. And uh, yeah, uh, now, it's not only my, uh, my thing, uh, but uh, some other people also uh, uh, prefer to interpret uh, the semantics as a semantics of contents and of sentences. But uh, it's not only one non-fragon 
calculus. Uh, in 1997, I published, but six years earlier, I constructed such a calculus with uh, non fregan implication, not identity. Implication, non fregan implication means that it's possible, it is possible to define non fregan inference. Uh, it's, uh, it's some difference. Uh, axioms, uh, of course, I was inspired by, uh, by SCI, uh, but my only uh, object was to solve layer antinomy, and this calculus really, in an easy way, solves this, uh, solves this uh, antinomy. A model for contentual classical calculus. It's uh, this name is has uh, maybe three four years because earlier I called it uh, in some other way, but uh, this uh, this name is uh, uh, I think adequate for this uh, for this calculus. So we have a model which in interpret uh, which interprets a new new connective, which interpret, interprets a new connective by, by this condition. Implication, contentual implication, content implication is true, is designated, if and only if A is equal to B and something. And something. It's important that, uh, is, yes, I will not explain now. Uh, this part. Inference, semantic inference is standard. What we can see that sentence P says what is said by Q. It's an uh, intended uh, reading of, of this implication. If the content of the se sentence P is equal to the content of the sentence Q and something. What does it mean? If we will consider some uh, sense of sentences, uh, the sense is not finite. We cannot define the sentence in a finite way. It was, I will give uh, an example, so uh, maybe it will be better to, to see this fact. But what is an intention for uh, reading? of this, uh, of this uh, new connective. Yeah? P says what is said by Q, Q, P says Q, some people suggested me to, to say just in this uh, abbreviated form. So, uh, of course, uh, in sometimes uh, it can be the same. P, P and Q can uh, possess the same sense, the same content. Then, uh, not only P says Q, but also Q says P. Then they are identical, but it is not Sushko's identity. Uh, I, I must say that uh, my idea was to cut Sushko's identity, trivial identity, really trivial, ex excellent trivial identity, on two implications, we you know, in the sense of, uh, of uh, con conjunction, but I couldn't. It's, uh, I don't know if it is possible to define in uh, in struct structural logic, but I don't know. It's an open question. So, example. Let us consider the sentence P. There are exactly three fresh apples on the tree in my garden near Łódź. What this, uh, what this sentence says? That, for example, there is some fruit tree at all. There is some fruit tree. That I, I, I have some, some garden. Maybe it is true, maybe not. But it doesn't matter, because we are uh, uh, trying to understand the sense of sentence, uh, and so on. It's, of course, this list is longer. Why there is no December? Because uh, apples are fr fresh. So it can't be, uh, they, can't, they are not frozen or dried. So uh, there is no December, no November, no uh, March, and so on. Yeah. So, we can reconstruct the sense of the sentence P 
Uh, maybe in such a way or maybe in some other way. Uh, it depends on our imagination or some, some current uh, consciousness. I don't know. But uh, now I think that it's uh, uh, more clear this element. And something. Always something. Yeah? We cannot finish. We cannot uh, define uh, the sense of the sentence by some finite set of senses of other sentences. Yeah. So uh, this is this reconstruction of the sense. For Sushko, it was uh, they were uh, situations, and it was a reason for some some. Uh, protests, but anyway. Yeah. Uh, yes, I, I, I already mentioned that uh, the relation between SCI and uh, content, contentual classical logic is uh, not as I wanted, because uh, this, uh, if we will extend uh, Identity, Sushko's identity, uh, by these three axioms, then we will receive new identity. I add C from content, and this identity is defined uh, uh, by uh, content implication. Uh, this is. Uh, just uh, how to say, maybe rhetoric, maybe not only rhetoric uh, um, aspect of this of this presentation. But uh, later I will um, present uh, in uh, how layer antinomy is solved by this uh, on the on the ground of this calculus. But it's uh, it's so easy, like uh, that the situation is similar to the to the sets, theory of uh, set theory, we know that uh, Russell antinomy appears on uh, uh, theory of sets which are understood uh, in a distributive way, but on mineralogy it doesn't exist. Uh, I, I think that uh, we can see at this uh, calculus with content implication as a, some Neurological version of logic. Why? First of all, uh, we can see that the tautologies, which uh, uh, main functor is a, a content implication connective, uh, are only are only one of these two uh, form, either trivial uh, alpha p says. Q, Q says P, so it's the same. And conjunction. Yeah. Conjunction always says about every its contract. So we can see that the content, interpretation of the sentence in the model, uh, intended model is uh, uh, content. So the content of the sentence if uh, such implication is true, then the content of the sentence Q is an ingredient of the content, content of P. Because content of Q is a whole or part of the content of P. Just, I, I recall here a sense of, of uh, how, how um, Leśniewski defined uh, ingredient. So, uh, now we can see that many big problems, paradoxes of true functional logic. True functional means uh, logic, uh, sat logic uh, satisfying uh, Frege uh, Frege's axiom uh, do not appear in the logic of content. They just not exist on, on, in, on the logic with at least one 
a connective which forces uh, such models that Frege's axiom is violated. So, uh, which problems? All those that results from, the, from not taking into account the content of the sentence. In other words, true functional logic, it is logic with only true functional connectives, is about logical values, not about thinking. That is why I, I would like to underline how big idea was uh, created by, uh, inv invented by, by Sushko, because he stopped with this uh, Frege's paradigm. Everybody has some problems when we would like to explain students how excellent, how we are think, thinking according to logical uh, rules, logical uh, tautologies. It's a problem. For example, one of the well-known, a lot of uh, paradoxes of material implications. For any two sentences, any two sentences, either P implies Q or Q implies P. It's a nonsense from the point of view of the content of sentences. Of course. We say, OK, uh, it's an example that, that uh, logic is some uh, idealization or something. No, this logic is about logical values only. This, this uh, tautology is intuitive. It's not counterintuitive. It's counterintuitive from the perspective of, of uh, contents of sentences. But from the point of the uh, logical values, when we will remember that uh, every sentence is reduced to its logical value, it's quite intuitive. It's not paradoxical. Why it is paradox of material implication? Because it's misleading. Some fundamental misleading. Logic, which is uh, true functional, is applied to presentation of our thinking, which is contentual. That is why Sushko, Sushko, uh, Sushko, uh, Sushko's idea was so great. But I, I, I add, Sushko uh, was disappointed, permanently disappointed, because of, to, the, to, to his death, uh, logic, his work was uh, indifferent biologicians. Probably they didn't understand what for was, what about was this logic. Uh, we can see that uh, if we will put here content implication, uh, this is uh, intuitive, <laughs> it's uh, counterintuitive, but uh, it's not a tautology. Uh, it is not, we cannot prove on the ground of uh, the contentual logic that uh, for two sentences, content of one, at least content of one sentence is a part of the content of another sentence. No, of course not. So uh, this uh, Sushko's idea introduced some new paradigm in thinking about logic and developing on, of logic. This logic can be used for uh, illustration of our thinking. That true functional logic is, should be always limited to the uh, case with logical values. Another example, a lot of just, I, I choose some, some few. Ross's paradox. In, uh, in Vichy, I saw that it was presented as a big, uh, uh, really big, important paradox. It's, it's a trivial problem because it comes from the fact that 
that we try to, de to define obligatory using only true, true values. It's nonsense. Obligatory because a sentence is express, expresses something obligatory because it's true or why? Many truth sentences uh, say, uh, say about such horrible cases that it, they shouldn't happen. So it's ob obligatory. But so maybe uh, we should define use such a rule, such rules. Just example, uh, one from many possible that if P says what is said by Q, then if, it is ob if P is obligatory, then Q is obligatory. Not if P implies Q, because this implication is true functional. And on such base, we, can, we try to define contentual from its nature, don't think Factor. So uh, here is a is mentioned by me earlier a solution to the liar paradox. Uh, if we have this connective liar sentence L, uh, we can uh, express in such a way: L says, not L. Yeah. But there is an important, another trivial axiom, uh, uh, not axiom, no, uh, uh, tautology, CCL tautology. L uh, says L. L says what is, every sentence says what it says by the sentence. Uh, so using some Axioms we have, L is equal to L and, not L and, contradiction, and, 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 what we want. Uh, in special case, we, we can uh, prove such a, uh, such a sense, partial, as always, partial sense of the sentence. Uh, somebody can say, Sorry, but everything depends on this trivial uh, tautology. Uh, it's not trivial. The form is trivial, but sense is not trivial. This tautology was known in, uh, after many years, I discovered this fact by, by case. Somebody told me that, you know, that it's Buridan's thesis. In well known in medieval ages. Ah, maybe I will finish the, the, this proof. Uh, so, a semantic interpretation of the sent sentence uh, L has a semantic correlate in the form of A0. So, uh, L says not L means that this, is, this uh, element is designated and either uh, A0 is uh, true or is not true. If it is true, we have contradiction because it must be true. It's an interpretation uh, of this uh, uh, content implication and not A is true, so A is not true. Uh, but if we have A not true, then uh, negation is true and everything depends on this element. Is there some false sense, which is an, a part of the sense of the layer sentence? Yes, we found it. Yeah, this is permanently false element uh, of the sentence of the content of the sentence. So we just put here Z as a, as this sentence. We were looking for this sentence but we found it and it means that the sentence L 
is false, not being true. This is a problem. What about uh, Buridan's thesis? Uh, when I was studying the problem of uh, understanding of layer sentence in medieval ages, uh, I discovered that for many philosoph medieval philosophers there was no problem because it was just false sentence. Why false? Because it was contradictory sentence. It was an opinion. Buridans, Kilvington, uh, Bradwardine, uh, Albert of Saxony, and others. Why? Because they believed, they, they believed and remember about uh, virtual entertainment principle formulated by Jean Buridan. What, is, what does it mean? This principle states that every statement in natural language implicitly asserts its own truth. What does it mean? Implicit, implicitly, not implies that it's true. Implicitly, if we would like to uh, recognize the logical value of the sentence, first we, we have to understand it. And we, if we will reconstruct the sense of the sentence, we are thinking in logic of truth. Uh, for example, if, we, uh, uh, if uh, we would like to recognize this, our conference take place, takes place in uh, Łódź, for example, we, uh, of course, we immediately recognize that it's false sentence. But step by step, we need to understand the sentence. Yeah? So we, what, that, what is a, a, a semantic correlates in the logic of true? Just that we can imagine either situation like uh, Sushko wanted or uh, content of sentence, but on the one that this conference takes place in another city, concrete which. But if we would think about uh, the sentence in the logic of falsehood, huh, it would be splitting, horrible splitting of, of informations. It could be. Uh, Minnesota, in Minnesota, a lot of places, and in, in Italy, in, in Poland, everywhere. With one exception of which. So uh, I talked about it with uh, Professor Wolenski, and he said that probably, in his opinion, we are thinking uh, uh, thinking by truth was uh, thinking by uh, uh, falsehood. It's possible, of course, but it's, it was eliminated on the evolu during evolution because it's, it is splitting of, of information. So. Uh, Yes, in this sense, so if I understand the sentence that our conference takes place in which, in the logic of truth, I know what does it mean, I recognize the sense, I compare the sense with reality, and now I say it's false sentence. But firstly, this sentence says what it says. So speaking the truth, a liar sentence is paradoxical only on the logic of truth. It was uh, stated by Professor Wolenski, but uh, later I, I think that I proved it. So a paradoxical uh, sentence, a sentence paradoxical on the logic of uh, falsehood is a uh, truth teller sentence. Yeah? So, Ah, it's uh, uh, in, interesting for me, at least, a uh, case that my former student uh, believed so strongly in this idea that when he, uh, he's a psychologist. I, for eight years I was working in Institute of Psychology. He attended my seminar for uh, three years. Later, uh, uh, go to Antwerp, and now uh, he is finishing uh, PhD thesis, but he forced me to promise that we will make, uh, we will uh, carry out some experiment, and finally in uh, 2018 uh, in Warsaw we uh, 
made this experiment. What it's, it was uh, shown that we are really thinking uh, it's trivial, yeah, uh, by logic of truth, but more important that the, our brain, before a, a moment when we are understanding the whole sentence, our, uh, it's so-called 400N, it's a moment, uh, okay, I'm sorry, I will not explain it, right, because uh, it was some, uh, some uh, technology of, uh, of uh, neuropsychological uh, experiments. So, uh, we shown that liar sentence, reaction our, of our brain on liar sentence is exactly like on uh, false sentences, and truth teller sentence like a truth sentence. And uh, uh, some details are in the paper, uh, which is still unpublished, but it has a DOI, so it is, it is accepted, and, and we are waiting on the moment when the uh, volume of sentence will appear in this text. Uh, if we have no problems with liar sentence, we can try to define uh, the, the truth. Uh, let us extend uh, our language for CCL uh, by Bolt 1. And in the model, let us uh, distinguish some element, bolt I, which is a conjunction of all designated elements. Uh, in interpretation, uh, uh, bolt I is interpretation of one. Then we can define the truth. Alpha, the sentence, uh, it's axiomatic definition yeah? in, in this language. It's, uh, it's a tautology. Uh, we can introduce some, some uh, predicate of truth, but the sense is the following. Sentence P is true if and only if it is a part of, uh, of this element of our uh, image of the world, of our model, which uh, connect all true beliefs. So, uh, this true, this definition of truth, of truth uh, coincides with, for example, science. Why something what was uh, scientific thesis in in the past now is a false thesis? Yeah, because we changed our model. These models, uh, we have um, some model, some image. I images of, of, of the world, even in some, in our private life. I have some imagination of my neighbor. It's a true for me. When I will present to somebody uh, 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 his person, so, and I'm not a liar, uh, then I will say, uh, present some sentences which are true for me. Anyway, th that, this, this definition, uh, free from paradoxes, uh, I think coincides with our everyday thinking. So, another interesting moment. Uh, I don't know if, uh, if the problem, if uh, the book, uh, Fast Thinking and uh, Slow Thinking by Kahneman and Tversky uh, are uh, familiar for, uh, for the audience, but uh, this is a psychological book uh, in which uh, Kahneman and Ver Kahneman, uh, Tversky died already before uh, writing this, uh, this book. So Kahneman, only Kahneman wrote this book and received Nobel Prize. He, uh, he distinguished between fast thinking and slow thinking. Slow thinking is called by Kahneman and Tversky as logical. It's interesting. And fast thinking is understood, is, is called by, was called by them as illogical. It is clearly written in the book, illogical. Why? Because of several biases. 
Uh, the most important is the Linda problem. Uh, they uh, recall this experiment in many, many places of Israel and uh, United States. In these both countries and universities, they uh, made this experiment on big amounts, uh, totally on big amounts of students. Uh, this uh, description P, P we can understand as a conjunction. Uh, P is a description of Linda, which was intended by Kahneman and Fersky that uh, it should suggest that Linda is feminist, feminist uh, activist. So uh, it was written in such a form. You can read it. Uh, then they confront two sentences. Conjunction Q and R with R. What is Q and R? Q and R says Linda uh, is active, is active in feminist movement and Linda is bank teller. R is Linda is bank teller. They recall, repeated this uh, experiment with various list of sentences. They began from the list of 10 sentences, among which uh, this conjunction, Q and R, and R, of course, not in symbol, uh, they didn't use symbols, only, only text, uh, written text, so uh, in natural language. So on this list, I don't remember on which positions, we had uh, Q and R and R. And they asked some, everybody, please order all these sentences from the most probable to the less probable. And more than 85% of people put Q and R higher on this list than R. They were shocked. Kahneman uh, recalled this fact that at first he was calling to him in a nervous way, what was happened, Did something wrong and so on. No, they repeated and again. Thank you. And uh, what does it mean? That is why they called that fast thinking is illogical, but it comes according to some rules. Yeah? Moreover, they asked, uh, it was also in this book mentioned, uh, that uh, Kahneman asked some scientists from university to answer on this question. Later, they don't present the list of 10 sentences, just only two sentences. Uh, Linda is bank teller, and Linda is a bank teller and is active in the feminist movement. That's all. And uh, the scientist, I don't remember uh, his, uh, uh, which, uh, which uh, science he represented, but he said, I know what is a good answer. I know how I should answer on this question. But there is something in my mind which is crying, put conjunction higher. Why? Maybe it is a problem with, uh, uh, how to say, not, I don't want to say such, in such strong way that wrong, but maybe it's not excellent idea to use true functional logic for describing, for uh, explaining what is logical in our thinking. Let us see. Oh, I'm sorry, I cancelled one page. Hmm, okay, I will use whiteboard. If uh, everybody who have to answer the question known Linda, as described, it was, it was described by P. P was a 
according to intention of Kahneman and Tversky, uh, was such written that in our notation, P would say, uh, P R says Q. Yeah, P says Q, but never this. No. So P says Q is acceptable by people, and surely it would be higher than this. Several uh, experiments confirm this fact. So P says Q, but if we would reconstruct the sense of P, we have Q and some, uh, something. Something. What does it mean that if we will think about Linda as a concrete person, she has um, some flat, she has some uh, color of hair color, uh, she has cut or not, has dog or not, she works somewhere or, or not. So when we already accept this fact, we are, uh, we are closer to accept that she works somewhere, maybe in bank. Okay, because <laughs> she is a living person. That is why all four, we cannot say this, we can accept this because of this fact. Reconstruction of the sense of sentence means that we are ready to accept some new information if we have some point which is acceptable. And this is acceptable. This not. That is why uh, I think that uh, This is a difference, another difference, example for difference of using a true functional logic and, and uh, contentual logic and, oh, negation. I add first time because I, I should have made it. Uh, it was tribute to Roman Sushko. Thank you. <laughs>